Welcome, health enthusiasts, to a journey where we unravel the mystery of weight loss. It's a topic that's captured the world's attention, fueling an endless stream of queries, discussions, and debates. The quest for weight loss is often obscured by a fog of misinformation, spawning a myriad of myths and misconceptions. From fad diets promising miraculous results to the promotion of dubious products, the weight loss industry thrives on the world's collective desire to shed those extra pounds. But here we're not about quick fixes or empty promises. Instead, we seek to understand weight loss from a scientific perspective. What's the truth? And what's merely a tall tale? What should you eat and what should you avoid? Which diet is truly effective? These are the questions we will delve into. So brace yourselves as we embark on this enlightening journey. In the next few minutes, we will debunk myths and provide you with a scientific understanding of weight loss. To begin with, it's essential to understand the basic principle of weight loss. This principle revolves around a simple equation, calories in versus calories out. In layman's terms, it's about how much energy you consume versus how much energy your body uses. When the energy you consume from foods and drinks is less than the energy your body uses, you create what is known as a calorie deficit. Now, what happens when you create a calorie deficit? Well, your body needs energy to function and when it doesn't get enough from your diet, it will start to use stored energy. This stored energy is in the form of fat and thus weight loss occurs. It's as simple as that. But hold on, it's not just about the calories. The type of calories you consume also matters. Not all calories are created equal. For instance, 100 calories from a donut and 100 calories from a bowl of broccoli will have different effects on your body. The donut might give you a quick energy boost, but it won't keep you full for long and has little nutritional value. On the other hand, the broccoli is packed with nutrients and fiber that can keep you feeling full and satisfied for a longer period. Then there's metabolism, the process by which your body converts what you eat and drink into energy. Your metabolism plays a significant role in weight loss, and it's affected by various factors such as age, sex, and muscle mass. The higher your metabolism, the more calories you burn, and the easier it is to create a calorie deficit. Let's not forget about physical activity. It increases your body's energy expenditure, helping you burn more calories and create a larger calorie deficit. Whether it's walking, running, cycling, or lifting weights, any form of physical activity can contribute to weight loss. So the first step towards losing weight is understanding and creating a calorie deficit. Now that we know the basic principle, let's delve deeper into the science of weight loss. Our body uses three major types of nutrients for energy, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. These are known as macronutrients. Carbohydrates, often the main player in our diets, are the body's go-to source for energy. But when we limit our intake of carbs, our bodies are forced to look for alternate energy sources, and that's where fats and proteins come into play. Let's look at fats first. Fats are high energy nutrients. In fact, they contain more than twice the amount of energy as carbohydrates or proteins. When our bodies are in a state of calorie deficit, meaning we're consuming fewer calories than we're burning, our bodies start to break down stored fat for energy. This process is known as lipolysis, and it's the primary way we lose weight. Now let's talk about proteins. Proteins are the building blocks of our bodies. They're essential for growth, repair, and maintaining our body tissues. While proteins aren't typically used for energy, in a state of severe calorie deficit, our bodies can break down proteins for energy. But here's the catch. Our bodies don't store excess protein like they do fats and carbs. Instead, any excess protein is usually excreted or converted into fat. So, while a high-protein diet can help build muscle, it may not necessarily lead to weight loss. So, what does this all mean? It means that while all three macronutrients play a role in our energy balance, it's the balance of calories in versus calories out that ultimately determines whether we gain, lose, or maintain our weight. And this is where the type of food we eat comes into play. Foods high in fiber, protein, and water content tend to be more filling, meaning we're likely to eat less of them and thus consume fewer calories. Remember, the type of food you eat is just as important as the quantity. You've probably heard of numerous diets promising instant weight loss, but do they work? Let's start with the keto diet. 
It's a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet that pushes your body into a state of ketosis, where it burns fat for energy instead of carbohydrates. The keto diet can create a calorie deficit, which is essential for weight loss. However, it's not for everyone. It can be tough to stick to and may have side effects like fatigue and nutrient deficiencies. Next up is intermittent fasting. This diet involves cycling between periods of eating and fasting. It doesn't specify what foods you should eat but rather when you should eat them. Intermittent fasting can be an effective way to create a calorie deficit. However, it can be challenging to sustain this diet, and it may not be suitable for people with certain health conditions. Lastly, let's talk about the low-carb diet. This diet limits your intake of carbohydrates and encourages you to eat more protein and fat. Like the keto diet, a low-carb diet can help create a calorie deficit. However, it may be difficult to maintain and cutting out carbs can lead to nutrient deficiencies. It's important to note that while all these diets can aid in weight loss, they do so by creating a calorie deficit. This means you're burning more calories than you're consuming. However, these diets don't guarantee weight loss. It's also crucial to remember that losing weight too quickly can be harmful to your health. In addition, these diets may not be suitable for everyone. For instance, people with certain health conditions may need to avoid these diets or modify them to meet their nutritional needs. It's always best to consult a healthcare professional before starting any new diet. So, do these diets work? Well, they can aid in weight loss, but it's not just about the diet. It's also about your overall lifestyle, including regular exercise and good sleep. While these diets may aid in weight loss, it's crucial to choose a diet that suits your lifestyle and health requirements. We've discussed the role of diet, but what about exercise? When it comes to weight loss, exercise plays a crucial role. Think of it this way. Your body is like a car, and calories are the fuel. When you exercise, you're burning off that fuel. This helps create what is known as a caloric deficit which is essential for weight loss. But let's dig a little deeper. Exercise not only burns calories, but also increases your metabolism. This means your body continues to burn calories even when you're not exercising, often for hours afterwards. It's like getting a bonus for your hard work. Now you might be wondering, what type of exercise should I be doing? The answer is a combination of cardiovascular exercise, also known as cardio, and strength training. Cardio exercises like running, swimming, or cycling primarily target the heart and lungs, boosting your cardiovascular health while burning a good deal of calories. They're excellent for quick calorie burning and are a must if you're looking to shed some pounds. But don't discount strength training exercises. These include activities like weightlifting and resistance training. While they may not burn as many calories as cardio exercises during the workout, they have a secret weapon. They help build muscle. And muscle, my friends, is a calorie-burning powerhouse. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn throughout the day, even when you're just sitting around. So the key to effective weight loss is a balanced mix of cardio and strength training exercises. And remember, it's not just about losing weight. Exercise has a multitude of other benefits, from boosting your mood to improving your sleep quality. It can help manage or even prevent various health conditions, including heart disease, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes. In conclusion, exercise is not just about burning calories. It's about creating a healthy, sustainable lifestyle that promotes overall well-being. Remember, it's not a race, but a journey. So find exercises you enjoy and make them a regular part of your life. Exercise not only aids in weight loss, but also improves overall health. So how do you lose weight scientifically? Let's tie up the loose ends. The key to weight loss, as we've discovered, is a scientific approach that combines three critical elements. First, a calorie deficit. This means consuming fewer calories than your body burns. It's the fundamental principle of weight loss, and no diet can bypass it. Second, a balanced diet. This isn't about cutting out entire food groups or obsessing over single nutrients. It's about eating a variety of foods that provide the nutrients your body needs to function healthily. And third, regular exercise. This helps to increase your calorie burn, build muscle, and boost your metabolism, making it easier to maintain a calorie deficit. So to recap, weight loss is all about creating a calorie deficit, eating a balanced diet, and exercising regularly. Remember, there is no shortcut to weight loss. 
It requires dedication, consistency, and a scientific approach.